I've been a little bit extra indulgent this past month because it is in fact my birthday month. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be yet another unboxing. I know that lately I've been doing a lot of unboxings on my channel and truth be told, the reason being is that I've been a little bit extra indulgent this past month because it is in fact my birthday month. I am turning 31 this month, so I'm already beyond 30, so I don't feel as though it's all that big of a deal when you turn 31. Um, but yeah, I've been a little bit indulgent because of that, treating myself with some bits and pieces here and there. And yes, so this is another unboxing, but this time it is a double Gucci unboxing. Before I get into today's video, if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is generally at least once a week, but I do on occasion try to get two videos up in a week. So let's get right into today's unboxing. Um, so I have two boxes here. Like I said, it's a double Gucci unboxing. I'm going to start off with this box first. This is actually from Louisa Villaroma. So we'll pop that other box down. I purchased this Gosh, can't remember. I think it was like uh, last week. I think I bought it last last Friday or something like that. And it's now arrived today, Monday. So it was essentially three day shipping from Italy. I think that's where Luisa Via, Via Roma is from. So yeah, it came from those guys and it is a Gucci item, obviously. That's why it's called a double Gucci unboxing today. So here we are. They always do the tissue paper and then the ribbon on top. This is just classic Louisa V Aroma, what they always do. And inside is, this is the first time I've ever actually owned this item from Gucci. Actually, to be honest, I have never really been into Gucci. Even back a long time ago, I was just really not into Gucci. So this is my very first Gucci scarf. So here we have the Gucci scarf. This is, I think it's a wool blend or something like that. Uh, let me see if I can find the care tag. It does feel really soft, um, like scratchy wool, like mohair. Um, is that a wool? I don't know. But that kind of scratchy sort of feeling of wool, I generally am allergic to. However, this feels really, really soft. I would say that this feels like cashmere. So if it is um, a wool blend, it's definitely a very good quality one of that. So here is the care label. And it says that it's made in Italy. Yeah, it's 100% wool. So that's amazing. Yeah, it's 100% wool. Don't think I would be allergic to this whatsoever. It has no scratchy feeling. It feels ridiculously soft. And I have a cashmere sweater. I have the um, Chanel cashmere sweater and that feels really soft, but this feels almost as soft as that. So I'm very, very pleased with it. It is, I think if I remember correctly, it's 180 centimeters long. So it's got quite a bit of length to it, which is Good, so it should wrap quite nicely. These are the Louise V Aroma tags. And the, sorry, this is double sided, like I said. That's the brown side, and that's the beige side, so you can wear either side, which is good, it means it has a versatility to it. And what I really love about this scarf is actually the price point. This was 395 Australian dollars, which Compared to Louis Vuitton scarves, it's much cheaper, especially compared to even even um, Hermes silk 90 centimeter scarves are almost $700. And if you were to go and get their cashmere scarves, they are like $1,700. I feel like something like this, this kind of scarf for $395, you are getting really good value for money. This would go essentially with everything, especially in this colorway. And then, like I said, it's double-sided, so you could flip it over and use it on either side. So I've just wrapped it up. I've double-wrapped it around my neck. And as you can see, it has got still quite a bit of length to it. It's not short. It's not sitting up like there or anything like that. It's a really, really good length. But then as well, I have to cut these tags off, but I don't have my scissors with me right now. So excuse the fact that there are tags dangling around. Um, so you could just wrap it like this and then have it dangling like that. 
So um, even though I said it was $395, it actually worked out being less because I had some Louisa V Aroma points. If you're not familiar with Louisa V Aroma, when you do spend on their website, you accumulate points. So I had, um, I think I had about 900 points, which was a little bit shy of getting a um, higher level voucher. I think the next one might've been $60. So I was a bit shy of that. So I ended up getting the $40 reward voucher and I used that towards buying this scarf. So that means that this scarf came to $355 Australian dollars. And then on top of that, I would have got cash back as well with Ebates. I think it was at 4.5% at the time that um, I did the purchase. So. I saved even a little bit more with the Ebates cash back. So this is my one and only luxury scarf that I own. I have owned other scarves before, but I ended up selling them basically because I just got bored of them or they weren't working out the way I'd liked. However, I would say that this one's probably going to stay in my collection for a very long time. I cannot foresee selling it because it's in a neutral color. It'll go with everything and the cost of it, it's like, why even bother selling it? It was such a great deal anyway. So yes, this is the Gucci scarf in all wool. I will link it below on Louisa V Aroma if you are interested. Okay, so let's get into the next unboxing. As you can see by the box, you can probably tell it is actually a pre-loved item. I am not shy of buying pre-loved items. I like the deals that you can get in the pre-loved market, plus you can get some really great gems. And because I'm not hugely into Gucci, I do really like their shoes, but when it comes to their handbags, I'm not exactly that in love with them. I did want to get a Gucci handbag, so this is a Gucci handbag in here, but I wanted to get a really good deal on it so I could get a feel for the brand and, you know, the GG logo, if I liked it, if it went with my style. So, enough said, let's take off the tissue paper. It doesn't come with a dust bag, it's just simply as is, and it is a vintage Gucci bag. So it's inside this bubble wrap here. Let's take this off. And I purchased this from Rakuten. Um, at, that is a Japanese store that's like eBay. It's like a marketplace, very similar to eBay, except it's predominantly only, or it's only Japanese sellers that are on there. And it's quite popular in Japan, I believe. But um, other countries like um, myself, I'm from Australia, I can shop on their website. I just have to change the search results to be Australia shipping. So I bought this on there for a very good price. I'll wait until I've shown you the bag before I say how much it was. And we will have a look at it together because this is a genuine unboxing. So inside was the Gucci Ophidia. Ophidia? Ophidia? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I'm going to put it down below. Um, I'm great at butchering everything. So the Gucci Ophidia bag. And this is a current released bag that Gucci now has. However, this is the vintage version. They did have the vintage version well, truly long ago. I don't know how old this bag is. I assume it's more than 20 years old. So they had this bag quite a long time ago and then more recently it has been re-released. And I think the retail price is around about 1500 for the medium large size. I'm not very familiar with it. But having a look at the bag, there is definitely wear and tear. It was ranked as BC. So a BC rank means that it's not exactly a B rank and it's not exactly a C rank. It's right in between. Based on what I can see, I'd say a BC rank is accurate for what Japan describes it as. So we'll start off by looking at the corners of the bag. There is some wear to the corners of the bag, just here. Nothing really there. A bit over on the other side at the back. And then a little bit at the top just there as well. Otherwise, generally it still looks, it looks okay. Like it's not really badly worn out or anything like that. It's just some minor wear along there. The actual bottom corners look much better. There doesn't seem to be any wear to the bottom corners at all whatsoever. So it seems to be only on the leather part. And that's probably got a lot more to do with the leather being dry and not really properly taken care of, which is typically what you see with pre-loved vintage bags anyway. And that's the side here. So the strap isn't all too bad, but um, I did notice that there is some cracked glazing along the strap and it does feel quite a bit dry and that's why it's got like this kind of bumpy sort of feel to it here, but it's definitely cracked glazing and slightly peeling. 
I could send this to a bag spa and they could reglaze it, but I'm not really all that worried about it. I bought it for a really good price. So the price was 300, just under $350 Australian. And that was because I also had some Rakuten points that I could put towards the purchase to take some money off. And I, they also were offering a $26 coupon code to take $26 off the total price as well uh, for Australian customers, which was good. Uh, the front of the bag is otherwise pretty good. And that's really the main thing that you're going to see anyway. Well, what people are going to see on the outside is this front, and that looks fantastic. I can't see really any obvious signs of wear. It has an odor, like a, a vintage odor, kind of like the Lady Dior had that I got that was vintage as well, that had a vintage odor. So this doesn't have a bad smell. Like I'd say a vintage odor kind of is like a musty sort of smell, but I should be able to get this out with my classic trick, which is uh, white vinegar, uh, Pretty much one part white vinegar one part water and a teaspoon of baking soda and then i just spray it lightly inside the bag and i wipe it down this i'm not sure if i can wipe it down because it's got like like i said it's got like a kind of texture to it so i might just give it a spray and see how that goes and just let it really dry out looking closely now it's like um it's kind of like it's a felt inside can you see how it's like a furry kind of feeling? It feels a bit furry, the lining. And then um, they've used some kind of whatever they've used to color it, like a painting, and the, and the paint is just kind of cracking off. So I don't know if that means that it will transfer to my items. I guess we'll find out. Because my dog is on my auto man, I can't put my things down on it. So I've had to use, put all my things inside the box so we can see what fits in. So my phone fits in the front pocket and my phone is not a plus size. It's just a regular size Google Pixel. That's how it looks with all those items inside. So that is fairly full up to the brim and not too heavy or anything like that, and definitely not overstuffed either. So yes, it definitely packs a punch, this bag actually. It will fit all my essentials for running errands, um, probably can squeeze a nappy in there as well, just in case, but probably mostly only use this for an errand bag anyway. So by the looks of it, this bag should be able to go crossbody on me. I will include some photos of me trying it on, but yeah, it definitely seems that it can go crossbody and it could be worn on the shoulder as well i probably have to um, make an adjustment to make it a little bit shorter and yeah i have nothing else to say thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys in my next video bye